Okay, in a separate video, we showed how to integrate products of sines and cosines and uh, <laughs> promised to show or give another video on products of secants and tangents. And so that's what this one is, all right? As we started the that last uh, video game, let me just remind you all that the, uh, from our probably calculus one, right? The differential of a function is equal to the derivative of that function times dx. And so a couple of examples, the differential of the tangent is the secant squared of x dx. And the differential of the secant of x is the secant of x times the tangent of x dx. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is going to be integrating products of sine, or I'm sorry, secants and tangents. And here, here's a couple of examples. Okay, so here I'm, I want to integrate the secant to the fourth power of x dx. Here's what you do. If the power of the secant is even, okay, if the power of the secant is even, break two of them away. And pair them with the dx in the back. Okay, the reason for this is because this configuration of these two factors, if you will. Okay, and they're right here. And the secant squared of x dx is equal to the differential of the tangent of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my integral accordingly. Watch this. Replace everything in the rectangle with the differential of the tangent of x. That tells me I'm no longer integrating with respect to the variable x. I'm integrating with respect to the function tangent of x. So I can only have tangents under the integral symbol. Okay, so I'm going to have to rewrite the secant squared using the trig identity, 1 plus the tangent squared of x. And after that, I can read them off term by term. The antiderivative of 1 d tangent of x is the tangent of x plus the antiderivative of the tangent squared d tangent is tangent to the third. Okay, so think when you've got products of secants and tangents now, if the power of the secant is even, try breaking two of them away and pairing them with the dx. Let's try another one. Okay. Now, this time, the power of the secant is not an even number. It's, it's odd. Okay. But notice that the power of the tangent function is also odd. So here's the idea. When you're integrating products of secants and tangents, and the power of the tangent is odd, here's what you do. Break away one secant and one tangent. Okay. When the power of the tangent is odd, break one tangent away and one secant away. Move them to the back and pair them with the, the, uh, the dx. Okay, now these three together is the differential of the secant of x. Okay, in fact, that's right here, right? Secant x tangent x dx is equal to the differential of the secant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite my integral like this. So I'm now integrating, not with respect to the variable x as, as we were told originally, but I'm integrating now with respect to the secant function, which means everything under the integral symbol must be in terms of secants. All right, we're going to have to rewrite the tangent to the fourth. Let's write tangent to the fourth as tangent squared to the second power. And then I'll rewrite the tangent squared as secant squared minus one. Now, I'll have to expand all of this, of course, but when once I do, I'll be able to read them off term by term. 
like we did above. Okay. All right, here we go. The antiderivative of secant to the six x d secant secant to the seven over seven and so on two secant to the fifth x over five secant to the third x over three. I know a lot of you um, probably learned u substitution and uh, that's your thing. <laughs> You can think of this as substitution as well. Think of this, right? Look, look at this line right here. Think of this as u to the sixth du. u to the fourth du. u to the second du, where u is equal to the secant function. Okay? All right, let's try another one. All right, so here, once again, we've got an odd power of the tangent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break one of them away. We've already got one secant, so we can rewrite this as tangent squared x times the secant of x times the tangent of x. I'm going to write, write that like this. Then, once again, just like in a previous example, I'm going to replace all of that with the differential of the secant. So now I'm going to integrate. I'm going to rewrite my integral like the last two. I'm going to rewrite my integral, but I'm going to integrate with respect to the secant function, which means I'm going to need to rewrite the tangent squared as the secant squared of x minus 1. And at that point, now I can read them off term by term. Okay? So secant squared x is d secant of x is secant to the third. And then 1 d secant is the secant... And then, of course, a vertical shift. Okay. Suppose it had been... Suppose it had been this. Suppose it was secant to the third. 10x. Okay. Well, once again, the power of the tangent is odd. Right? So I'll just simply break away one of the secants. Take it and the tangent, pair them with the dx. I'll rewrite that configuration as the differential of the secant function. And now I can just simply read off my answer directly, right? Secant squared d secant is secant to the third over three. Let's see. Now, occasionally, you probably know this from your experiences, integrals sometimes are in disguise. So, for example, suppose you had this. Right, you've got 1 over the cosine squared. Well, remember from our trigonometry days, right? 1 over the cosine squared is the secant squared. Okay. And then we could go, we can actually go right to the answer, right? We know that this is equal to the tangent of x plus c. And while at this point it's probably a little overkill, I would like to point out, since we're talking about using differentials here to solve these integrals, again, look at this. This whole expression can be rewritten as the integral of the differential of the tangent of x. Now the integrand is a 1. The antiderivative of 1 d tangent of x is equal to the tangent of x. Just another way to look at it. Okay. Just, it's kind of clever. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Now, this time, suppose that we had, let's say, uh, 
tangent squared x times the cosine of x. Okay. Now here we've got an even power of the tangent, but we don't have any secants in the problem, right? Ordinarily, we would look to see, well, is the power of the secant even? If so, break two of them away. Is the power of the tangent odd? If so, break one tangent, break one secant away. So we don't have either one of those scenarios. Sometimes, you know what? Turning everything into sines and cosines sometimes is the answer. Other times, uh, you might as well know it, gang. Sometimes you just have to be flat out clever. But for this one, I think what I'll do is I'll rewrite this then as the sine squared over the cosine squared. Okay. And notice I can cancel one of those cosines. Okay. What do you think of that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, you know, it's something. So maybe what we can do now is rewrite the sine squared as one minus the cosine squared. Use it. Those trig identities, they sure do come in handy, don't they? <laughs> they never go out of style. <laughs> now I'll split up the numerators. Again, one over the cosine is the secant minus cosine squared over the cosine is one cosine. Okay. And then my final result, I can read these off. The antiderivative of the secant is the logarithm of the secant of x plus the tangent of x minus the sine of x plus c. Now, depending on where you are on your calculus journey, you may have seen this integral of the secant of x already, which is equal to this quantity. But just in case you haven't, I'm, let, me, let me go ahead and make that my last problem. I want you to believe me <laughs> with that integral. And you know what? Uh, I, would, I would also say this, everyone, that that's an integral that comes up often enough is probably worthy of just rem remembering it, okay? So I want to integrate the secant of theta d theta. Okay, it's an odd power. So there's, there's no breaking anything away here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by a clever expression of one. Okay, here's my clever expression of one. Now multiply the fractions together. Okay, and I know it looks, it looks like all I did is make things worse. <laughs> and then we don't want that. Like, like here's the thing. Notice everybody, <clears throat> We've, it, this is something now. Notice that the numerator is exactly the derivative of the denominator. Check it. The derivative of the secant is the secant times the tangent. Plus, plus. The derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. So what is this? When the numerator is exactly the derivative of the denominator, what is that? Yes, the logarithm. Good, the logarithm of the denominator. Okay, and that's how I got the result on the previous example. That, everybody, like I said, I think is an example that's worth remembering. <clears throat>